All right. Uh, <clears throat> kind of looking back uh, at, at last week, you know, I'm on Saturday, you know, really was kind of spot on, I thought, with uh, just the initial thoughts of the entire game. You know, it, uh, uh, what was interesting was that game felt a lot like last year. It felt like last year, um, you know, we went through some, uh, some COVID issues and, uh, you know, kind of worked our way through some injuries throughout the course of that game. But, uh, you know, what it, what it really came down to was uh, the execution side of things and just the efficiency of what we did. I thought Incarnate Ward did a great job at, at executing and staying on the field, like Brant was saying, in third downs. Uh, you know, they, they made some, you know, critical catches and plays, and I thought their quarterback played extremely well. Uh, and and uh, I thought overall, you know, we, we made too many mistakes and they capitalized off of it. If you looked at where we were at, uh, you know, when we did make a stop on defense, we ended up getting a roughing the passer call and they ended up going down and scoring. Um, you know, uh, you look at, uh, you know, they get a stop and then they shank a punt and hit our guy in the back of the leg, which is unfortunate. But, uh, you know, the uh, ball bounced their way on that when they go and score. Then you go back, we stop them, and then uh, it's 31-28, and then we go and we fumble. Uh, and then they score, make it 35-31, then we don't respond on offense. Uh, we three and out, we punt, and then they score again to make an 11-point game at that point. So, uh, you know, I tip my hat to them. Uh, they, they, they out-executed us. They capitalized on our mistakes. We made too many mistakes in that moment. Uh, and that's something that, uh, you know, we're pretty disappointed in, you know. Um, you know, we went in Sunday and we had a lot of talks, um, you know, a lot of discussions. On, on where we stand and what to do, you know. Um, at the end of the day, you've got to you've got to face it. You got to take ownership in it. You've got to uh, you got to make your corrections and and you got to move forward and you got to continue to fight. You know, um, you know. I've been in part of these situations before where these type of losses uh, have been a critical. Uh, it has been you know pretty critical on a team, and I've seen it where it actually turns the team around. Um, you know, it's to see how we're going to respond on Saturday. I think they've. They had a good week, a uh, good day of practice today. Um, you know, we've we've got after them, and we're all evaluating ourselves, and we're all coaching as hard as we can. And, and our players are out there like we got better today. You know, um, but you know, is that going to translate on Saturday? You know, we're playing a great Eastern Michigan team that uh, obviously they've built the program up where they're you know being consistent and, and playing at a high level. You know, they beat three Big Ten teams and. And uh, they play Wisconsin tight, you know, and they've been going to bowl games. And it's because they play hard, physical football, and they don't make very many mistakes. And we can't go out like what we did this past weekend and, and make these mistakes because they'll capitalize on them. And, and that's what they do. They don't make very many of them. And, uh, you know, I think our kids are, are ready to get back out and play on Saturday. Uh, you know, the, the main thing is, is, you know, when, when you're in times of adversity, it's going to test your character and who you are as a person. and. and and uh, what are you going to do? You're going to either dwell on it or, or you're going to move forward and you're going to keep fighting. And uh, uh, we're going to see how we respond on Saturday. I liked where they're at today in practice. we got to have another one tomorrow. It's all about being in the present moment and focusing on what we can control in this current time and, uh, you know, find your way through it. So I think these kids are, uh, they understand that we still have nine games to go. we got to put everything on the line right now. I know there's going to be a lot of guys playing extra reps this week based off of uh, just kind of where we're at with depth charts. Um, you know, we got to get to the bye week. You know, we got we to give everything that we got into this game, and then we got to get to the bye week, heal up, get our, get our depth back, and then we got eight straight conference games. So, you know, looking forward to getting out there, traveling to Detroit and playing. So, questions? You know, obviously, a, a loss like that, there's a lot of introspection on, on the part of the team. How, how much is there on the part of the, the coaches to kind of look and make adjustments to the scheme and preparation and, you know, clean up some of the discipline issues with the penalties? Like, how much of that are, are you guys taking? Yeah, we take on ownership of everything, you know. Um, you know, it's just like our kids are too. Like we don't, like everybody, like we, we have a transparency. We all look ourselves in the mirror. You know, like you look at, you know, play calls, you look at schemes, you know, like, you know, sometimes like there's going to be times where we got to execute, you know. Uh, you know, we had three critical drops that really hurt the momentum. We had five penalties. We had eight negative plays like on offense. Uh, there were some busted assignments. There's one on a fourth down where we, we busted the play and went the wrong direction on it. and was something that we typically hadn't done. You know, I felt like that we weren't playing to win the game. We were playing not to lose it. Uh, I thought we were playing a little bit uptight, you know, across the board. I know we went through injuries when we lost DJ to targeting and we had to put Drake in. We're on our fourth nickel and then DC with his knee, when his knee buckled, we didn't have an extra corner at that point because we had like eight guys out. Um, you know, and, and understand that, you know, sometimes you're going to have to put these guys in position where they got to execute based off of like how the game's going to uh, flow. 
Uh, but we look, we're just as critical on our coaching staff, like as anything, on terms of making sure that we're we're putting our kids in the right position. You know, like offensively, you look at that game, like it, it was a drop eight game. You know, you got to run the football, and and we we ran it pretty efficiently. Um, we had our moments, but like when you're in a shootout like that, and the defense is having trouble stopping people, you know, you've got to respond, and we didn't do that. You know, so there's there's a lot of things that go in it. Like everybody takes ownership from a coaching perspective, from a player perspective, from from scheme standpoint to just overall discipline of everything, you know, like, and you could literally take one play and you can really dissect it into how you can make everything better on one play. So, you know, there's still a lot of moving parts. We talk it through, we watch, we watch it as a staff, and, you know, we make our adjustments accordingly. Coach, you said there were 25 players out. Mm -hmm. uh, that was 24 to 25 with DJ. Yeah. Uh, well, how many of those are they expected back? Yeah, that's, that's been an interesting co topic all week. Uh, none of them are practicing right now. We have 15 in our two deep out. Um, we'll we'll get uh, two back on Thursday. We'll get two back on Friday, and then we'll have six fly commercially. Uh, 5:30 a.m. flight out of Austin to land at 9:30 in Detroit. So, you know, it's the way it is. You know, that's why I felt like it, I felt like last year. You know, like you know, it, I felt like we've hit got hit with COVID more than anything. We had uh, some interesting protocols that occurred last week that knocked out a lot of people. You know, and. Uh, you know, they're in their 10-day quarantine right now. And, you know, like, unfortunately, like, some of them can't arrive until game day. So a uh, lot of logistics with what to do. But, you know, it, it's going to be tough to play those guys in this game, you know, when they haven't been practicing all week. So, you know, you bring them there for emergency situations because we could have definitely used them in this last game. You know, you do get Eric Sutton back, uh, who's here right now uh, and practicing. So that gives us a lot more juice and more options with that, you know. Um, you know, it's just unfortunate where, where we went with that, you know. Um, if we would have lost a corner in that game, uh, we, would have, we would have been right back to last year, like almost identical. You know, and you sit there and you, you talk about all off season about the, the depth and how we've improved so much. But then when you have 25 guys go out, you go, that's a quarter of your team and you're back to, you're, you're back to you know, square one. But, uh, but I, there is, like what I said after the game, there's no excuse with that. You know, we still got to execute. We can't make mistakes. We can't. You know, it, we, we've got to be able to, uh, you know, not fumble and miss assignments. And, you know, I don't, I don't think there's effort issues. There's just strict, like, execution issues. And, and you guys see it at times, too. So, uh, you know, we we got to be able to respond when, you know, our back's against the wall. So you talk about uh, having these execution issues. How are you going to fix those in the future and not let it happen again? Yeah, yeah you practice it, you know. Like I'm saying, it, it goes back to just not playing up tight. You know, I thought we started playing up tight as the game went on, and and uh, you know we started having some issues with you know depth of routes and spacing of routes and and uh, back path and mesh issues, and you know there was there was some things that we just they, they were trying to just get, make a play instead of just trusting the whole process of you know press it front side and read the first down defender and then cut it up the field if he plays back or you know keep it front side you know just going back to our regular rules and we went right back to the basics of everything again today and you know. It's, you know, I think that's going to translate, you know, this weekend. Uh, 12 fumbles in the game. A lot of fumbles on both sides. Both so sides. What, what, what was up with that? Is there something you can put your thumb on with that? Yeah, like, you know, I, again, I thought both teams were, you know, just I think where everybody was playing up tight a little bit, you know. I, you know, Brady had one on an exchange. You know, we had, you know, we had a new punt returner, Chandler Spites. You know, he ended up uh, muffing the first punt. Uh, you know, they did the same thing on, you know, their punt. You know, like, it, it, it was kind of sloppy on both sides going back and forth. You know, like, you had 12, you know, balls on the field. And, uh, you know, they, well, we ended up getting, um, what, two of them. And then they ended up getting one. You know, they got two of them as well uh, with Brock and um, what was the other one? What's the, to, uh, uh, yeah, then they hit, they hit off the leg. It sounds unfortunate, man. Like, there's. It's a 20-yard punt at midfield, and, and it hits the guy in the back. I've been a part of those. Like, it's not like the kids personally. It's like he's sitting there trying to block a defender for the punt return, and it hits him in the back. You know, it's that's just poor luck. But yeah, I thought I thought the, the ball was on the field way too much. You know, and you know we're, we can't do that, especially versus a team like Eastern Michigan. Mass comes back first half or second half. He comes back first half. He can start. Okay. You know, there's obviously a lot of season left, despite the fact, even despite it being a disappointing loss. Um, what what do you think in your mind is a big adjustment that you need to, to see from this team going forward in order to avoid another two, three win season? Yeah, like I'm saying we gotta respond this week, you know, and, and this is 
You know, like uh, you you watch us in those first two games, you know, and we don't make too many mistakes. You know, I thought we were just inefficient at times, you know, and that happens. Uh, and we played together. You know, like I thought, I thought this past game, you know, felt exactly like last year. I could feel like we weren't we weren't capitalizing on mistakes. We weren't elevating play. We weren't capitalizing on momentum swings. You know, we were making too many critical mistakes at critical moments. And and we've we've got to uh, minimize that. We're not good enough to just blow teams out like if we play sloppy football. You know, like I've been I've had teams like that have played like that before and 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 win by you know twenty because we had we out athlete people at times that other schools have been at. On this right here, we know everything's going to be contested, especially versus this game. Like you got to play hard, and you can't make critical mistakes because that's how they play their game, and that's what we need to respond right now. Uh, you know, there's still a lot of ball to be played. You know, we we got to get through this game. We got to get to the bye week. We got to heal up. We we got to at least not heal up. We just got to get our guys back at times, and then we got to make a run at the conference too. But it, it's it's one game at a time, you know. And we're going to put everything that we got in here to go and fight. You know, at, uh, when we get to Detroit. Yeah, I, I think they're down. They're disappointed. You know, you put a lot of work into this. You know, we've made strides, and and uh, you know, like, we're, you know, how are you going to respond? You know, they got a lot of like. They, there's two ways to go. You either quit or you keep fighting. You know, and then these kids put a lot of time and effort into it, and and it's time for them to you know step up and try to make a run at it. You know, and they and they know that, and it's everybody. You know, and and we all take the blame together. You know, and it's you know. Uh, I'm the one that probably wears it the worst out of all of them, but like you know, I can't, I'm not going to show that in front of them. You know, we got to we got to move forward. We can't dwell on the past, and we got to keep moving forward. I think they're, I think they're, uh, you know, ready to get back out there and redeem themselves. You know, it's an it's an opportunity. That's the beautiful thing about sports. You know, you get to line it back up again the next weekend and and uh, go out there and fight. You know, you're all you're only as good as your last game. You know, that's a, that's how this 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 world works. So we need to we need to strap it up and go out there and compete and, and play a clean game. You just said that you don't really like to show it. You're a pretty even killed guy. You'll see that often from you in the press conference. But mm -hmm. is, is, are you mad about this? Do you, do you know the spike? Yeah, I'm, 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 I'm disappointed. You know, I am. You know, um, I thought that was very uncharacteristic of how we've acted over the past really nine months. You know, um, you know, it just was, it just seemed like everything was off, you know, when we went in that game. You know, I know we did, we lost a lot of leadership. We had to, like, you know, it was a very unique warm up. You know, I had, I had two student managers, you know, throwing Pat and go and, and warming up and taking QB center exchange and and uh, you know you lose Savion Patton and you lose Tyler Vitt, you know, so you don't have as, as much you know leader vocal leadership out there, you know. I, I thought the energy on the sideline was very down, and, and compared to what it was in the past, because you normally have those guys, you know, talking it through and encouraging people and going with it, you know. Uh, like, you know, you sit there and you analyze every single facet of the entire game and program and what's what's wrong and how can you fix it and, like, you know, should we change anything? Do we need to change practice? Do we need to bump things back? Do we need to do, you know, it? how do we approach it, you know? And, and uh, you know, I've been, I've been, I grew up in this profession, you know. I've seen my grandfather, my dad, you know, even my brother at his schools and my close friends and buddies, you know, they, they go through, you know, hard losses at times and you know and it's like okay where do you go what do you fix like do you just keep you know staying the course how do you make things better you know and that's that's where I try to soul search you know like I, I look for what can we do better to you know just to, to put them in better position you know you know and then like you spend all day you know on Sunday trying to figure out how you're going to practice this week you know because you got 25 guys out right now you know it's you can't even go scout teams really you know where we're going scout teams and we're taking breaks and we're trying to work our way through it but that's part of just making adjustments. It's part of the job. It's part of a, about anything in life, you know. And yeah, like it, it you're going to be disappointed. You know, I'm a competitive guy, and, and you know, I, I want to win just as bad as anybody out there. You know, it's not like we put all this work into it to lose. You know, like we're trying to we're trying to work our way through it. And there's always going to be a different circumstance. There's always going to be different scenarios that you're put in. You got to fight your way through it and figure it out. And and uh, you know, I, I sit there and I take it hard for really. You know, 24 hours, and then you got to move forward. You can't just sit there and dwell on everything in the past. It's all about what you can do in this present moment, moving forward, and and uh, that's how we're going to respond. I just want to the Eastern Michigan season. When did you find out about the 25 players? Friday, Saturday? Friday morning. Friday morning. Yeah. So like you're at the hotel, we're working Tanner Pruitt. You know, and it was scout team all week, and you know did a really good job. He can handle it. Um, you know, you're working Wildcat in the in the hotel rooms. In the, in the in the banquet centers and 
you know, and then what defensively, you know, they're working different packages and trying to get Drake, you know, Johnson back in play and working out the what if packages. But yeah, it just it was, it was interesting, you know, when you had all these, you know, COVID issues, you just didn't know where to take it from there. You know, like you can't do anything about it. I felt like we got hit worse in this game than what we ever did last year. You know, on top of the injuries and Wade L being out now and and uh, Tobe was being out and then you got Russell Baker out and then you got Eddie was out for the game and then you got you start working your way through the whole thing and you know you got 25 guys out and 15 and you're too deep. You know, even losing Devin Martinez really hurts us from a special team standpoint. You know, because he's our four core guy, you know, and you know, you take him out and you know, you're still repping other guys, but like now you got DBs running you know, like they're having a double duty, you know, they're running around chasing all those routes that they were throwing at them in the game. And then all on top of that, end up having to run down on special teams and do all that as well. So, you know, I guess what I told them for the game, you know, we just got to man it up right now. You got, you got to man up, you got to fight through this because, you know, we don't have any backup. Like we have, we have depth issues right now, you know, and, and, you know, I, I thought we handled it well in terms of the depth. We just didn't execute the way we need to. How are y'all planning on minimizing COVID, you know, throughout the season? Yeah, we should be good. Like honestly, like once we get these guys back, you know, you know it. Uh, you know, there's there's a lot of lot of discussions, a lot of issues with it. There's non-vaccinated versus vaccinated versus, you know, you know contact tracing versus non-vaxxed and, and vaccinated. So it's, you know, like right now, like you know these guys are serving, you know, their 10-day quarantine, which will fall under the 90-day non-testing rule too. So that should be beneficial for, you know, that we still got a handful of them, but just like any other program, you know, everybody, I've, I've called around, you know, all weekend just asking for advice to what other schools are doing. You know, everybody deals with it, not to the extent that we dealt with, you know, on Saturday, but, you know, everybody will have, you know, two to three out a game based off of where they're at. What kind of challenges does Eastern Michigan present to you? Eastern Michigan, like, they're, they're a talented team, man. Like, they, in terms of, uh, I think they play well together. They're they're very simple on defense, and they play extremely hard, and they tackle, and they got a good front, and they're and they're very physical. You know, offensively, you know, they're going to be in twelve personnel and, and sprinkling some eleven, but they're going to give you all the eleven personnel sets out of twelve, and uh, they're in pistol, and they're going to they're going to run the ball, and they're going to be efficient in their passing game. And, you know, they're going to take shots when it's necessary, and uh, you know, they're just going to try to manage the game. They want to run the football, and they want to be physical, and they want to ball control, and and. Uh, you know, special teams wise, they got an unbelievable punter. You know, he's averaging 50 yards a punt, and uh, you know, they again, they're they're going to base everything off of physicality. You know, they don't make very many mistakes, and you know, they they capitalize on it. That's how they're successful. You know, they beat Rutgers in 17, and Purdue in 18, and Illinois in 19, and they're they're competitive versus Wisconsin this year. And you know, they you know they're gonna they're they're gonna fight you and they're gonna be tough and we gotta bring it we gotta execute you know and it's it's gonna be a really good challenge I think Coach Creighton's done an unbelievable job there you know and really he's done a great job everywhere he's been you know that's why he's one of the most successful coaches in uh, you know college football history. You know last time you were on the road uh, you got you got the win first non conference win for you what, what what was the formula for success there you're trying to you're getting a little superstitious trying to do the same exact things this week or what's going on this week. <laughs> No, I'm not a superstitious guy. I'm, I'm big on putting the work in during the week, you know. And, and uh, you know, like I just I, I sleep better at night when you know that you've, that you've done everything you possibly can during the, during the course of the week. But, you know, I'm not, you know, I, I, I don't put, like, my pants on one leg at a time or put a certain sock and shoe on and all that, but, you know, or eat something, you know, what, what I do. I just – I normally always get there and let's go play and compete. You know, I'm not really big into superstitions. It's more about just let's, let's find a way to win. Any other questions? Uh, injuries? Any other significant injuries besides the COVID period? Waydell. Um, Waydell will be having surgery uh, here soon on his foot. So he'll be out for probably, he has the same injury like what Rebels had last year. You know, so he'll be out for a little bit with a fractured foot. You know, he didn't play in this week last game. So. I saw no London Harris. Is she out for? London, London's been out since the Baylor game. Uh, he was hospitalized uh, after that game uh, with a, with an infection in his arm, and he's back. You know, he's just so light. He dropped thirty pounds in the hospital, so uh, we got to get him back. So we're traveling him, and we're 
we're having him eat and try to get his weight up. But he practiced out there today. But you know, we got to see if he's capable of doing it. Right now, he's just too light to go. We got to we got to get him back going. You know, and just get him healthy. Staff infection or what? Yeah, they. I don't know what type of infection it is. You know, like they they had some medical long term. You know, probably like I I couldn't explain. I just know there's an infection in the in, in his elbow. You know, and it swelled up pretty good on it. You know, so they think was it like bursitis, like a a uh, you know a busted bursa sac in his elbow. You know, but it ended up being infection, and you know he's he's back and going again. You know, he's healthy. Isaiah, we just got to get his weight back. Isaiah was kind of around too. Yeah, Isaiah had to play a lot more reps. You know, you lose your two rushes, you lose Devin Martinez, you don't have, you're doing that. Uh, and you lose uh, uh, London. You know, now you're down to Isaiah Nixon and Marquise Hayes. You know, and then like we moved Jake Lynch out there for a third team role, and you know, like the Isaiah, like he's tough. He's going to play. You know, you know, we just we got to. It'll be good once we get Devin back. You know, and we get some depth back there just to kind of eliminate all the reps that they end up playing. I'm assuming no Baker again. Or Baker, we get back. Um, you know, we'll see. We'll see him. Uh, he's also in COVID protocols on top of the injury that he has. So. Um, yeah, we'll see where that goes. Like we, he's not allowed to step foot in the building until Thursday, so like it's kind of kind of hard to get an evaluation. But at least I can get a Friday practice in with Russell, see where he's at. I can get a Friday practice in with Ty Evans, just to at least rep it. And then Tyler Huff comes back too on Friday. So you know we got we got to work our way through it. You know the interesting thing is is that you know you got a two o'clock kickoff there. Um, you know, and we're just gonna we're gonna show up with six guys on a commercial flight. You know, 